Hello and welcome to our worship service, which today also includes Holy Communion. Advent Sunday marks the beginning of the Christian year. Advent is the season when the Christian church turns again towards Bethlehem in anticipation of the Christ child. Many churches use an evergreen wreath with four candles to represent the four weeks of Advent, as well as the light of God coming into the world through the birth of Jesus Christ. The first candle is a symbol of hope. The second is peace. The third is joy. And the fourth is love. Today, we think about hope. Psalm 33 verse 22 says, May your constant love be with us, Lord, as we put our hope in you. We have so many hopes for the future at the moment, don't we? But think now of hope as we look forward to the coming of Christ by singing the first verse of the Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O come, o come comes from a Latin root which means coming or arrival. Developed in the early centuries of the Christian Church, it was a penitential period of about six weeks before Christmas, during which Christians were encouraged to fast for at least three days every week. In normal times, with all the Christmas dinners and lunches we enjoy, that would be difficult for us to do. But unfortunately, this year, it may be very much easier for us. In the coming weeks, we will tell and retell familiar stories about prophetic visions of a son to be born and a child to be given, of Zachariah being struck dumb with the news that his wife, Elizabeth, was at last expecting a child, and of an angel appearing to a young woman called Mary, who was betrothed to a man called Joseph. We will hear when Elizabeth's child is born to everyone's surprise, except that of the father, the child was named John. And we will also recall that after an arduous journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, the city of David, where no room could be found at the inn, Mary's child was born in a stable, wrapped in swaddling bands and laid in a manger. With glad tidings, the angels will disturb the shepherds, keeping watch over their flocks by night. To King Hera's discomfort, Magi will appear from the east, bringing gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh for the one who is born the King of the Jews. Advent. A time then of waiting. A time of vibrant and trembling darkness and of heartwarming, hushed anticipation. A season of watching and wondering. For although many of us have heard and cherished these stories since childhood, it is important that we hear them again. But why? They hold up for us that most precious gift, the gift from God of hope. Watch now as we light the first of our Advent candles. If you have a candle handy, please light it with us as we turn our hopeful thoughts towards God and the birth of Jesus. We will then sing the first verse of another favourite Advent hymn, Christmas is Coming. We light this candle for all God's people struggling to be bearers of hope in a troubled world. God, as we wait for your promise, give light, give hope. Christmas. 
Angels figure prominently in the story of Christmas, as well as in the Bible at other times. Over the next few weeks, we are going to be looking at the angels' words to uh, Zechariah, to Mary and to Joseph, all of which started with, do not be afraid. The Christmas story is all about God coming into the world to bring his presence of love, of joy, of peace to us with the hope that we do not have to live our lives in fear and we do not have to live our lives on our own. There are many who need to hear this message of hope today. The churches in Selkirk and the Valleys are playing their part in sharing this message with those who are in our area, who are in special need, whether they're on, our, on their own or receiving care. Each angel has been knitted with love and I'm sure prayed over as the knitting progressed. They go with the message of wishing you peace, joy to the world, and love came down at Christmas with the, the text, with love from all the churches in Selkirk and the valleys. We bring our prayers to God, asking that he will bless the giving and those who will receive them. And so let us pray. God, the giver of the greatest gift of all, your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you to bless these angels as they go into many places this Christmas. May each recipient know that they are not on their own, that your strength and comfort are available for everyone. Come close to each person, we pray. May they know and experience your love over this season and on into the future. Bless too those who have given of their time and their talents to produce them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We come to God in prayer. In the beginning, before anything existed, you were there. Our minds cannot begin to grasp the mystery of your existence. Before all things, beyond all things, beyond our imaginings. Throughout the ages, we humans have struggled to understand you and to describe you. We try to use clever words, omnipotent, omniscient, transcendent, triune. These only disguise the hopelessness of our attempts to define you beyond description, beyond comprehension, unknowing and unknown. And you would have remained unknown, except that you came, you came Emmanuel and became God with us. You came and taught us to call you Abba, Dad, Father, loving parent. And so we come to you as children to our Father, unafraid, aware of our weakness, our smallness, but knowing we are welcome, knowing we are loved. We come to you this morning again as we are, no secrets, known and loved. We come for reassurance in our troubled world. We come for forgiveness for our errors, weakness, our foolishness, our pride. We come to find peace 
in our turmoil. We come for focus and direction and guidance. We come to find encouragement from your word and from each other. We come because you came. And we come thankful, thankful for giving us life, thankful for all that is good in our lives, our friends, our families, our community. Thankful for this beautiful and wonderful world spinning through the vast emptiness of space. Thankful for the changing seasons as autumn moves towards winter. So much to be thankful for. Thankful for the love, forgiveness and acceptance that you offer. Thankful that you are the bedrock of our lives. Thankful that you came and that you still come. As we move into Advent, the time of coming, we pray that you will continue to come into our lives, into our communities, into our world, bringing hope and love and peace and joy. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Prince of Peace, bring peace to our world this Advent, this Christmas and every day. Amen. The first reading is from John 1, verses 1 to 9. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him no nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And the second reading is from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to the start of verse 5. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For light, we wait in darkness, longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the dark. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many 
despair. Your word alone has power to save us, make us your living voice. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather Make us your bread, broken for others, shed until all are fed. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather Hope springs eternal, we say, but hope seems in short supply these days. Hope for ourselves, hope for the future, hope for our country, hope for the world. Hope is one of those little words we use all the time without really thinking about what it means. Hope to see you next week. Hope you'll be feeling better soon. Hope the sun shines for our walk. We say, where there is life, there is hope. And instinctively, we grasp hope matters. Hope is important. And without hope, life is bereft of something crucial to our sense of health and well-being. Desmond Tutu said, hope is being able to see that there is light despite the darkness. You cannot read the Bible for long without realising that hope is expressed in a different way. In the pages of scripture, hope is grounded not in human capacity or expectation. Rather, hope is grounded in who God is and what God has done and everything God promises. It is that hope we celebrate at Advent. In Micah, we read, but you, O Bethlehem, you are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth one who will rule Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient times. Bethlehem was little more than a tiny village, a few miles south of Jerusalem. Zechariah was but one of among hundreds of temple priests. Mary and Joseph were in the herd of beyond the immediate circle of family, neighbours and friends. And Palestine was far from being the centre of the world's power and influence. Yet to this rural backwater and through these unknown people, God kept his promise. And a child was born, a son was given, Emmanuel, God with us. Here is the hope at the heart of Advent, the hope that draws deep into the mystery of the Christian faith, incarnation. God taking human flesh, the simple yet profound insight that despite all the darkness, with the birth of Mary's child, we can see light. What a gift then in this Advent season to rem be reminded that our hope, our true ground of hope, does not lie in ourselves with all our cleverness, energy and technology. It lies in God, in who God is, what God has done and everything God promises. And because it lies in God, even dark and difficult days can be faced with hope. In our intercessory prayers today, we focus on hope 
Hope for our world, hope for our community and church, hope for our families and friends, and hope for ourselves. 1 Corinthians 13 says, these three remain, faith, hope and love. And they're all bound up together. We pray in faith, out of love, putting our hope in God, Emmanuel, God with us. As we look around our world, in much need of hope, we see much that concerns us. But this is nothing new. 3,000 years ago, a writer of songs said in Psalm 42, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. We lit the first Advent candle this morning for God's promise to put the wrong things right and bring to earth's darkness the hope of love and light. And so, in the confidence that he hears and cares about all our concerns, let's take, take some time, mostly in silence, to bring to God our hopes this Advent. And so first, as the music plays, we bring to God in our hearts our hopes for our world. Next, coming nearer to home, we bring to God our hopes for our community and our churches. And now let's bring to God our hopes for our families and our friends and neighbours. Finally, let's bring to God our hopes for ourselves, for our own lives.
will be done on earth as in heaven. Amen. And so, as the weeks of Advent unfold ahead of us, continue to lay these hopes before God and watch for signs that he is answering them, giving thanks where we see him at work in our world and in our lives. A short act of communion. If you haven't already got a piece of bread and something to drink, you might like to pause the video now and go and get it. Jesus, the one on whom we wait in hope, came fulfilling the promise of God found in the prophets. Jesus, the one in whom we wait in hope, as he promises to return once more, to bring us into his presence forever. Jesus, the one we meet with now, through bread and wine, the meal he gave us to remember him till he comes again. Let us remind ourselves of that promise that we find in Mark chapter 14. While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks to God and handed it to them and they all drank from it. Jesus said, this is my blood which is poured out for many, my blood which seals God's covenant. I tell you, I will never drink again this wine until the day I drink it in the kingdom of God. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. As Jesus gave thanks, let us give thanks too, as we follow his example. Let us pray. Father, Son and Spirit, you who were all there at the creation of our world when time came into being, we praise you. Father, Son and Spirit, you who were there as Jesus came into our world at a specific time to show us your way of living, your way of loving, we bring you our praise. Father, Son and Spirit, you who promised to be there when time is no more, we bring you our praise and place our hope in your love being with us forever. Be to us, O God, like living bread for starving folk, like the warmth of the crust and the taste of the crumb, giving us strength for our living and spirit for our loving. We worship you who are the bread of life, physically and spiritually. Be to us, O God, like living water for thirsty folk. You who turned water into wine at the wedding in Cana. You are the fulfilment of our deepest yearnings, the longing of our very soul. Come, satisfy us now, we plead, as we eat and drink to remember your death, your resurrection, and the hope of your coming again in order to bring us into your loving presence forever. In your name we pray. Amen. After giving thanks, Jesus took bread, broke it, and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. With this bread, we will remember him, son of God, broken and suffering. Suffering for our guilt, innocent offering, as we eat. Let us remember him.
After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, saying, This is my blood, shed for the forgiveness of your sin. As you drink, remember him. With this wine we will remember him on the cross, paying the price of sin. Blood of Christ cleansing us deep within. As we drink, we will remember him. The peace of God be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, your peace invades our lives and we thank you for it. Your death has brought us forgiveness. Your resurrection brings us hope. Your presence with us day by day brings us strength, power, comfort and challenge. May we go from here knowing that you have called us to meet with you. And now you send us to meet with others, transforming their lives by your presence in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. season. Be with us on our journey to the stable and beyond. Be with us in our worship and prayer as we await our Saviour. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and with those we love this day and forevermore.